R&B pop singer and songwriter, Sybil Lynch, known simply as Sybil, was born in Patterson, New Jersey. Both of her parents were huge music lovers, especially jazz and R&B, and her grandmother listened to a lot of gospel. So Sybil got an earful in the home growing up of many different genres. She was also exposed to other types of music outside the family, since she had a very mixed friend group that loved Leonard Skinner, ACDC, and Def Leppard. Fun fact, she's the cousin of former En Vogue singer Maxine Jones. Even though she was constantly surrounded by so much music, Sybil says she didn't aspire to sing professionally growing up. She originally thought she was going to be an attorney. She did enjoy singing though, and one day decided to participate in a talent show. Lo and behold, she won. So she figured she should keep at it. She eventually made it into Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and record producer C.C. Rogers Band and began performing all around the New Jersey, New York area. While her artistic talent was obvious, Sybil still held on to her aspirations of attending law school. But after she graduated from North Carolina A&T State University and was about to take the law school admission test, she came to the realization that it wasn't the right path for her. So she went out and found herself a nine to five as a proofreader and editor for a publishing company while continuing to do singing gigs on the weekends. It wasn't until she recorded what would be her first single called Falling in Love and was offered the opportunity to go on tour that she officially made the decision to go full steam ahead on the pursuit of a career in music. She signed to Next Plateau Records and Falling in Love reached the top 30 on both the R&B and dance charts. Her debut album, Let Yourself Go, dropped in 1987. It included Falling in Love plus two other singles, the title track featuring Debbie Fender and My Love is Guaranteed. Both songs made it onto the R&B chart as well as the dance chart, with My Love is Guaranteed coming in at number four on the latter. The album failed to chart in the US but did make it onto the UK albums chart. Her second album, released two years later, would give her the greatest success of her career. On the self-titled project, she achieved worldwide crossover hits with her cover versions of Dionne Warwick's hits Don't Make Me Over and Walk On By, which were released in 1989 and 1990 respectively. The former became Sybil's biggest hit in the US, peaking at number two on the R&B chart, number four on the dance chart, and number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100. As far as the latter is concerned, which is a stock Aiken Waterman production, Sybil actually holds the distinction of the highest UK chart placing coming in at number six. Dionne Warwick's version only reached number nine, whilst Gabrielle's 1997 version reached number seven. Dinah Carroll also released a version in 1989 that just barely made it on the chart at all. The album became Sybil's biggest selling one in the US. She also signed with PWL Records for the UK market for this album, which it was given the alternative title, Walk On By. This was a great move since she was poised to have even more success across the pond. Now working intensely with Stock Aiken Waterman, production of her third studio album began in early 1990, with the lead single, Make It Easy On Me, being released in September that year. It didn't do well on any chart. Three other singles were released, including a cover of Bill Withers' Lovely Day, but again, flopped on the charts. The album, titled Sybilization, also failed to find an audience. After that, Sybil disappeared for a while, but was certainly not idle. Stock, Aiken Waterman were busy working with her on a fourth album that they were sure would put her back on top. And indeed, Sybil was relaunched in January 1993 with The Love I Lost, a cover of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes' 1973 US hit. Credited as West End featuring Sybil, the song flew up the UK chart to peak at number three, her highest charting single in that territory, and would end the year as the 29th biggest seller overall. It would also play well across Europe and make it to number 18 on the US dance chart, her first showing there for six years. With renewed success, this was followed by an original song from the smash hit making trio called When I'm Good and Ready in the spring of that year. It too would play to a popular audience and reach number five in the UK, as well as charting across Europe. The songs would be featured on two albums with The Love I Lost on a US release titled Doing It Now and both on one for Europe titled Good and Ready. The Good and Ready album peaking at number 13 in the UK made it Sybil's highest charting one ever. In 1997, Sybil terminated her contract with Next Plateau Records with the Greatest Hits album and later that same year, she dropped her last album to date, 
titled Still a Thrill, which was released in Europe and Japan only. In an interview with Halftime Chat in 2022, Sybil gave a very candid account of her experience working with Stock Aiken Waterman. I mean, it was cool. It was cool. Um, it, it, it was cool. I, I think the thing, I don't know if they knew what to do with me. Mm. Uh, I, I, they, wanted, they wanted someone like me, but then I don't think they knew what to do. I don't think the same level, I will say this, and I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't feel as if the same investments were made in, in the brown artist. Uh, that were made in the other artist, and um, that always bothered me because it seemed like they pushed um, certain re certain records and certain people. Uh, when I was right, I mean, I was primed. I, mean, I had a built-in. It was really could have been very very simple, but um, I had to work for everything. Let me say that I had to work really hard uh, for everything that I got on that label. Afterwards, she kept a low profile, still touring and releasing a few singles in the new millennium aimed at the club market. As she also told Halftime Chat, she chose to walk away from the spotlight because of the direction the industry had moved in, one she didn't like. It was not until considerably later that I realized that, that things had changed, they were changing. Um, it was not about being the gifted singer and or having a great song. It was about, you know, it's just like, is your, is your, uh, is your beat right? And, it, you know, is, are you young? And are you, you know, are you just image? It became, yeah. it, we became all consumed with, with image, what, what someone looked like. And, and I thought, you know, what happened to the days when you really had to have a voice? I mean, you had singers that were, they were, they were making records. They weren't singers. You know, you, you had a lot of that. And so a lot of the, the groups um, fell by the wayside because the way that they, the way touring went and the way that um, record companies were investing, it was just not for the, it was not ideal for the real singer or the real songwriter or the real producer. Um, it was more about, okay, um, can, can they sell records because they look like they're about 12 <laughs> singing these adult records, you know, mm -hmm. or they, um, or they're they're cool and, and it it just it just changed in a way that didn't wasn't comfortable for me wasn't comfortable for me. Later on, Sybil pursued a master's in leadership studies and adult education and put it to use working with adults in college. That work, she says, allows her to have a steady paycheck while dabbling in music when she wants to. As of 2022, Sybil was back in the studio working on new material. So only time will tell whether we'll see her back on the charts.